One of the most popular claims for astrology is that it can guide you through your love life. Every day, hundreds of copies of books on this aspect of astrology alone are sold. Please welcome my final guest, the author of books such as Love Lives and the Seduction, the Seductive, pardon me, Art of Astrology, Carol Golder. Carol, are some pairs of star signs more compatible than others? Yes, I think they definitely are. Even in sun sign astrology, which in fact is all we've got time to do here tonight. But yes, they are. Carol has kindly agreed to do a demonstration for us tonight. We scoured the countryside to find 12 blissfully married couples, and despite the odds, and here they are. <laughs> What we have here is one man from each of the 12 astrological signs, accompanied by his better half. Now, gentlemen, please move to your star signs, taking your wives with you. So, Carol, we've given you the zodiac signs for all of the wives. What have you done with this information? Well, I think I've probably broken up a few happy relationships, actually, without meaning to, but who knows? We're soon going to discover. I see. So you've read the signs, and you've figured out who they should be compatible with. I've done a little generalization on the signs, and as I said before, some signs are more compatible than others. So would all of the ladies now please move to the astrological sign that Carol says they should be romantically compatible with. Ladies? Will you look at this? <laughs> I don't know what the charm is this gentleman has, but he's attracted three wives. And, uh, gee, there's one gentleman over here, and another one here, and another one here. Uh, well, thanks to all. Carol, what do you think of that demonstration? Well, I think it proves the point that um, a lot of people can get on with people that aren't necessarily right for them. Tell me, does this demonstrate the basic principles of the kind of thing you do? No, of course not. I will do a date, time, and place at birth of somebody, and then I will see how their planetary aspects correspond to their proposed partner. No matter what sign you are, you really ought to be able to get on with them. Well, Carol, I hope that you make a lot of people very happy. Now, do you think the person in this photo is living or doing whether or not that person is alive or dead? Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome Agnes Freeman. <laughs> Agnes, earlier in the day we gave you five photographs. They're smaller versions of the ones we now have behind us. Choosing the photograph was a difficult task. We tried to ensure that as few clues as possible remain. Surroundings, clothing, hairstyle may all give a clue as to the age of a photograph. And thus, the likelihood as to whether or not the person is living or dead might be given away. I believe he used a pendulum to divine whether or not each person is living or dead. Correct, yes. Now, how does that work? Um, if the person is alive, the pendulum is turning usually right. If the person is dead, either it's not turning at all or I don't get any kind of reading on the person. So it's whether or, or not on the aura. Mm -hmm. I see. Now, Agnes has told us that if she is successful tonight, she would like to go on to a second test, independently supervised, to claim the $10,000 that I have offered for many years to anyone who can produce psychic phenomena under controlled conditions. Is that right, Agnes? That's right. All right. Well, first things first. Let's see how well you'll do with just five photographs. Now, there are tough odds against getting all five correct. What do you make of this lady? What I made out of this lady, <clears throat> I got the name she's alive. And uh, her name is Sandra, or somebody who belongs to her, the name is Sandra, and a lot of sadness in the past. Alive or dead? She's alive. She's alive. All right, we'll put a tick on that one to indicate that this... We visited the privately funded Metaphysical and Psychic Research Center in Berkshire. 
whose principal, Norman Knight, has been involved in psychic research for over 30 years. The center was founded in 1973. It was founded because we found that there was a, a, a lot wanting as far as um, uh, psychic and spiritual healing was concerned. And this is why we involved ourselves with research and investigation into this phenomenon. The ultimate goal, of course, is to, to bring some tangible substance to this intangible subject. Most of this equipment here came through um, times when I was in deep contemplation. Um, this particular object is our table that we levitate. And it moves around the room under certain circumstances, of course. Where are we going? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome my guest, Norman Knight. <laughs> Norman, you brought along a very interesting piece of equipment here. You say it could be used as a lie detector, but further than that, you say it can also in some way detect thought. That's completely true. I see. Well, let's see how it works, shall we? Surely. We have on the top here a dial which is recording microvolts. And at the moment, the, this particular person, my friend here, Now the eternal question, is there life after death? Tonight we'll be meeting people who say they can look back into the past, reach into the future, and move between life and death. First, is this a picture of a dear departed soul? We begin our quest with a lady who sketches what she believes to be portraits of spirit people, and these are examples of her work. Please welcome my first guest, Carl Pohl. Stephen O'Brien, who assists Carl with her pictures. This might be able to identify with the spirit picture that you're going to produce. No, we don't understand quite how this works, but we have to make the link with the spirit and then hope that it will make sense to somebody in the audience. I see. Well, I'm going to back off the set on and just let you do your thing. I will try to draw someone from the world of spirit. Stephen will tune in to the same spirit and if what we're getting makes sense to one of you, will you please answer, put your hand up. Obviously got a lady coming through, a lady who makes me feel terribly, terribly short of breath. She, she would have suffered either with heart trouble or possibly even have passed with a chest condition. But she's showing me herself a little younger than she went to spirit. She's got lovely thick hair, which I feel in the latter part of her life was much, much thinner. So much of the information we get from astrology is fairly general and subjective. Yet increasingly, business people consult astrologers for guidance in their financial affairs. In France, 10% of companies now take astrological advice on everything from takeovers to stock market quotation. Some psychics go so far as to offer help to the police. In order to see how useful this is, we prepared an experiment using this collection of instruments which might have been used to commit crimes. And then again, they might not. Is it possible for a psychic to read the history of an instrument just by touching? My final guest claims to be able to do this. Please welcome Nella Jones. <laughs> now, Nella, you regularly approach the police with information you believe you have about crimes. The test you and I have... ...plastic bags. Please unwrap them while I explain to the audience what they are. Any or all of these could have been connected with a serious crime involving a loss of life. The history of each...